Hi, I'm Gary Nash with Nash Construction, and we are here at what we call the Hyatt Residence. Uh, this is the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area's first LEED certified net zero home. What that means is that there is an extensive uh, certification that goes with uh, energy saving uh, techniques. Uh, there's actually three elements of green that we approach to achieve LEED certification. One would be indoor air quality, the other would be energy conservation, and a third would be uh, resource conservation. Uh, net zero, meaning this house will actually, when it's completed, use less electricity than it actually generates. So it's its own little power source. And part of the, one of the uh, certification tests that's required today is going to be the air blower test where we actually hook a blower up to the front door, seal all the windows, and, and as if the house was just locked down under normal operation. And uh, they, we, we suck air out of the house, trying to draw air through the cracks and crevices uh, through the house. Uh, that is then gauged uh, through a computer uh, that's hooked up to the uh, fan, and they can actually convert that into the size of hole that your house has. It's uh, really kind of strange. In the old mythology of construction, the average 2,500 square foot home has a hole the size of a four, foot four, four feet by four foot opening. And when you add all the cracks and crevices in every house or in one house of the old method of construction, you end up with a four by four hole leaking in, and therefore that costs you more money. So we're going to run this test today. We're going to meet Troy, uh, who's running the blower test, and also Ken with uh, Nova Spray Foam. Uh, the spray foam is, the, uh, all the foam has to be, or insulation has to be installed before this test can be uh, uh, performed, and that is a requirement to the lead certification. So let's go in, let's see what Ken's done with the, uh, the spray foam, uh, just to get an idea of uh, how well this house is insulated and sealed. Okay, now we're on the inside of the Hyatt house, and as you can see, this house is spray foam insulated. This spray foam insulation was actually spray foam to the outside of the cavity that was created by this 2 by 6 construction. So we have about 6 inches of spray foam that seals this whole house. You can see that Nash Construction actually took the extra precautionary measure to go through and caulk every 2 by 4 and every uh, floor joist that was sandwiched together to help create a better seal. Even in the windows, spray foam was sprayed around the windows to give that extra thermal seal. Uh, for this test, we've actually had to tape the door hardware, which actually would be installed. The fireplace over here is just covered up to protect it. That's actually what it will look like without that plastic cover on there uh, uh, when the house is in normal operation. So we're basically trying to recreate this house as a normal operation uh, when the TV's on, the kids are uh, playing, and, and the husband and wife are cooking and cleaning. Therefore, it's no more sealed than it would be under a normal operation. And I'm going to let Ken maybe explain some of the uh, uh, spray foam aspects. So let's go see Ken. Hi, this is Ken with Nova Spray Foam Insulation here at the Hyatt House, built by Nash Construction out of Marshall, Virginia. Very conscientious builder and brought us in to spray foam insulate this wonderfully designed single family home. We're really happy to be part of this project. They hired us in to spray open cell polyurethane foam. It's called AgriBalance. It is a green foam. It has vegetable oil in it, part of the mix, so it helps us out with the green certification for the home. In the wall cavities, we went into two by six construction and filled the cavities up with five and a half inches of the open cell foam that will help tremendously with the air seal of this, of this home along with make it very quiet. One of the great things with the open cell foam is it sucks up sound. 
So not only did we do the walls, you can pan up and you can see that we also did the between the floors to help with uh, sound deadening. Um, it's underneath the floor that I'm standing on now. Up in the attic area, in the roof deck, we actually put nine inches of foam up there to super insulate the attic. And in this home now, on this nice sunny day, we're quite comfortable here. The air conditioning system's not hooked up. It's quite comfortable. It'd be more comfortable if the doors weren't open. It would actually be cooler when we go upstairs and cooler still when we go up into the mechanical room right in the peak of the attic. So we're pretty much an integral part with making this home super energy efficient and getting it on the way to zero energy. We're quite proud to be in partnership with Nash Construction and helping them achieve this goal. Ken, thank you for that uh, great explanation on the uh, spray foam. Uh, now we're, I have Troy Tanner with the Home Energy Detective. Uh, Troy is going to create this blower test that I've been talked about outside. And if you could explain to us, you know, basically what it is that you're going to do, that'd be great. Yeah, what we're going to be doing is looking for the uh, volume of leakage in the house through infiltration. And with uh, how, to, how we accomplish that is we're going to be using an infiltrometer blower door. Uh, simply what we're going to do is we're going to put a pressure on the house equal to a 15 mile an hour wind. In my case, we use a 25 Pascal unit of measurement. We can get into that later if, if you wish. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to simulate a wind on the house. With, uh, with the infiltrometer blower door and other information that I put into the computer, we can then find out the entire amount of leakage that you have in, in a uh, particular unit. Now, what's important for you on this particular house is that the house being spray foamed is going to be very, very tight. So we're going to have to introduce mechanical air to bring in fresh air right. because we don't want the sick house syndrome and things of that nature. And with this, we're going to be able to size the what we call an ERV properly to be bring in the proper amount of mechanical air. An ERV, what is that? Energy recovery. And energy recovery. At any rate, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at the size of the ERV and how much air has to be energy recovery ventilation system uh, and bring it in uh, so that we can size it properly to the house so that we bring in the proper amount of fresh mechanical air. Sounds to me like you're just going to suck the uh, living daylights out of this house with a big fan. Well, yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to be depressurizing the house, and with an infrared camera and smoke puffers, we're going to go around and see if we can locate any problematic areas. Uh, in this case, with the uh, work that uh, Nova Spray Foam has done before and the work that I've done with you before, it's, it's, chances are we're not going to find a whole lot, but we will be able to find out any. What's the normal leakage in a house that you say? Uh, well, 2,500 square feet. Well, that varies from house to house, obviously. Each house is a little bit different, but... In the Washington, D.C. area, uh, under normal circumstances, you'd want to have about seven and a half air changes a day. Okay. What we're looking for is, uh, at a 50 Pascal measurement, is 0.35 changes per hour. And that's, that's, there's a lot of math involved in that. But right. what I generally find in homes in the D.C., Montgomery County, Virginia area, is we average about a 15 uh, air changes per day, which is basically twice, as what you, twice what you should have. How big of a hole does that come out to be? Normally, it could be up to two and a half to three feet. Wow! And I've seen I've seen up See, to five I spoke, or six. Feet. I said four, but it wasn't off by much. Yeah, it, it could be it could be anywhere. I, I've seen homes that have seven or eight square feet. I mean, it's just wow. Townhouses are just the worst, but uh, wow. for, townhouses. Oh yeah, they're yeah. it's just you know, we can go on about that kind of stuff. But so, uh, so what's the first step we did? First thing we're going to do is we're going to set up the infiltrometer blower door, make sure that it's all set up. Then we would take a tour of the home. Uh -huh. Make sure that all the interior doors uh, are open, all the exterior doors and windows are closed. Okay. Uh, take a look at the attic, and, and because of the condition of the house, we shouldn't have too much problem finding that. But we take a tour of the house top to bottom. Okay, great. We're going to go ahead and do that, and then get the blower thing set up, and then we'll uh, come back when we're actually running the test. Great.